So how did I meet J.A. Scuff and, you know, the YKK guys? And uh, it kind of, um, it was all through Chino. Like I might have said before that, uh, like, I was introduced to Chino. I became friends with Chino. Um, he didn't even really know I wrote. But then he, I, you know, I didn't bother to boring him with bullshit about, you know, London graffiti. They never heard of no one from over here. So I just used to go and see him. We'd hang out, blah, blah, blah. But then he ended up getting to know I write. And then through that, it's almost like I met Chino. Chino sort of verified me. And then he introduced me to graffiti. And um, that's basically how I met everyone. But the way I actually met J.A. and that was through... Uh, um, Chino rang me and he said that these guys were coming to London to do a show in East London and um, could I show him a good time so uh, I, I, I obviously uh, agreed and you know he co-signed me with them and whatever blah 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 and they came to London I don't really uh remember too much about the show the show was J.A. Scuff Giz, NATO, if not, I think that's it. Oh, and Viva, obviously. Um, and um, yeah, that was how it went down. I really only hung out with JA, Viva, Scuff, and uh, and Giz. As the, 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 the days that the show was going on, or they were getting ready for the show, we were going out most nights, me, Dale, Act, and and all four of them doing, you know, doing a few streets around the area. Um, they were in East London. You know, the, the area they were in back then wasn't bombed. And I'm talking about Whitechapel. And you look at it now, it's a Hall of Fame. Like, it's like a, like the whole of Old Street, the whole of Shoreditch, the whole of, you know, Whitechapel. All that area is just like a Hall of Fame. It's like legal around there, basically. It's like, um, but back then it was still clean. And it was still worth bombing, like it isn't really nowadays. You look like you did it legally, even if you didn't. So anyway, they came, did the show, we'd done some street bombing. The night of the show ending, we, uh, J.A. really wanted to go yards. Uh, we had a few plans. I think Scuff and Giz, maybe, and, well, Scuff and whoever, they went off with Act, FIFA as well. Um, and like, but, you know... They went and did street bombing because that's what they wanted to see and wanted to do. And we went yard, me, Dell and J.A. Now, uh, we went to one yard. The first night <laughs> the first night we went out, you know, believe it or not, like, it doesn't really matter if people believe it, there's photos to prove it. So, you know, it is what it is. We, you know, I reckon we did like 18 whole cars, 16 whole cars, something like that. It sounds ridiculous, but we were just doing two like, top to bottom. We did the fucking whole place. Everything on platform, we did We did top to bottom, on, right? So, um, yeah, we've we've gone in there. And uh, J.A.'s like, oh, blah, blah, blah. So don't go past that point and we'll kill it. And we almost, I don't know how many tins we had each. We emptied it all. Then, uh, then the next morning comes, we go in to get photos of that place. And uh, they're under the... Pl I've gone onto the like the bridge part to keep watch, and I'm like, these lot are taking photos. And then all of a sudden, like people start coming, and I'm like, I ring him up, and I'm like, I'm like, oi, 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 geezers are coming. So uh, they hide under the platform. And, uh, you know, I can't really tell the story, because I was standing up on the bridge just watching, thinking, shit, this lot are getting nicked for fucking, like, that many Hong Kongs. Um... But they, I didn't realise they were under the platform. And, the, yeah, as it's told to me, it's like uh, as they're walking down, like the guy's on the radio, and he's going, yeah, siding one, they, they've got them all. So, oh, no, Victoria siding, they've got all of that as well. And, like, it's, um, I really wish I had that on tape. Like, the guy's just, like, he literally got his fucking hand on his head. Like, they've done the whole place. There's, you know, they've never seen that before. Anyway, they piss off. We take photos. We go home, go to bed do whatever the fuck we're doing. We're high. We're high off of our amazing, what would you call it? Like, uh, conquest, right? So the next day, we're like, right, we know of another place that we can do this. And uh, 
And then the next place, we decided that we're not just going to do the outsides, we're going to do the insides as well. So, uh, I think there's like a 12 car, then another 12 car, then an 8 car in this in this place for that, that night. Um, the first 12 car we did a window down hole train on because it's not platformed. Um, then got inside the train. We had like fucking... We had like four litres of ink or five litres of ink. We had like a ridiculous amount of ink and we were just... We just started caning the insides. We'd done the whole insides on that. And then got out. And then when we get out the other side, we're on platform. So we're doing top to bottoms then on the other side of the train that we've done the window down hole train. We do a top to bottom hole train, 12 carriages. In fact, we only did eight because there's a certain part I don't like going past. Um, then we've turned round. Bosh. Whole train down the other side of that. Another eight carriages. And I don't think there was an extra eight. There was just two twelve cars in there because then we'd gone round the other side of the t the other side of the twelve car that wasn't on platform, and we we're on about car six or something. And we come across some other people's pieces, and I happen to know one of them. One of the pieces was by Krell. Like obviously, I ain't gonna go over Krell. That's like <laughs> he's been with me since you know nineteen ninety one or something. But um, he was with some other people, and um, yeah. We blessed them, you know. We we let them have, <laughs> we let them have both barrels, as it were. You know, you're out of bounds. You're not allowed in our layup. That's the way it is. We're going to go over you, even though it was their layup, <laughs> right? Um, so then we're like fucking. We we and then we did the insides on that train as well. So we've got up the next day to get photographs, and nothing's pulled out of the yard. Like they must have just thought, what is this? They never, you know, liters of ink used on the inside. We must have been in the place five six hours because basically what they did was um they didn't put anything out the yard and then we went to the yard and there was nothing in the yard so they had actually pulled everything out and it just went straight to brighton so i've rung hill and i'm like mate where do you think they fucking pulled these two i wasn't i didn't know if they what way they thought they'd gone into the they probably gone to brighton so i was like look we're going to come down your way me dell and ja jump on the train and come across into um into brighton so we go down there, we go to his station, we get on his station, the train, and we're getting the train to Brighton now. There's me, you know, Dell was about, and Hill was still puffing, it was that long ago. And uh, we're sitting in the old slam door, first class, door shut, smoking weed. And uh, all of a sudden, door opens, and it's the, uh, it's, it's, the uh, it's the guard asking for tickets. And we all just like look out the window and blank him. He's like telling us we're not allowed to smoke in there and all this shit. And then he's going, where are you going? Blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, J.A. goes, uh, I'm going to New Brunswick. And the geezer's like, no, you're not. You're going to Brighton. And J.A. was like, how do you know where I'm going? It spun the bloke out. He, he, he just didn't know what to say. He was like, what, what, what? And we were like, how do you know where we're going? We're, we're not going to Brighton. Anyway, we get kicked off the train. But it was... It was all right. Like, uh, we got kicked off, like, the stop before Hove or something, and we've walked into Brighton. By now, the rush hour trains are in, and we can't... They're, they're, like, it's, like, half ten in the morning, they're all... All the rush hour trains are back in the yard, and we can't see anything. So we're going around the yard, hunting high and low. All of a thin... Then J.A basically climbs up this fucking drain pipe about five stories and gets on top of this roof because we're like, look, if we could see up there, we'd be able to see into the yard. And he was like, I'll climb up there. And we were like, fuck off. And he did. He fucking climbed all the way up. And then when he's at the top, he's holding on by one hand. Like, I'm serious, like three, four stories up. And he's ripped the board off a window while he's up there, then climbed in the window. He's up on the roof. And he's like, mate, I can see the trains. I can see the trains. So we have to hang around... We're trying to get next to the trains uh, for five, uh, for three o'clock or whenever they pull, pulled out. So we, we, <laughs> we've now come back down, gone back to the other side of Brighton Yard, and um, we're going through the undergrowth to thinking, yeah, we're going to get level with these trains, so when they pull the ones in front, even if they don't run as, we're going to get good photos. We're going through there, and I don't know who did it. It was either me... Well, me, Del, or 
J.A. I don't know who fucking did it. It's the middle of summer and somebody's kicked a fucking wasp nest. And there's hundreds of wasps like all round. Like we've had to run in opposite directions. I've fucking been, st like everyone's been stung everywhere. Dell and J.A. ran off one way. I've run off the other way. I think I must have run with Hill at this moment. Um, and uh, we lost them. We lost them for 20 minutes or so. I'm like, fucking, I've had bees up my jumper, fucking down my back. Just fucked. It's like, I'm pissed. And um, those who have gone the other way, we've done this. Anyway, we've ended up bumping into each other and no one's happy. We've, everyone's been up, you know, anyone who's been yarn had been there. When you've all been up all night, it's fucking two o'clock the next day and you still haven't got photos. Right, but on top of that sheer feeling shit and not wanting to be there, some cunts kicked a wasp, someone's kicked a fucking wasp's nest, and uh, everyone's been stung five fucking times. I remember J.A. up on right by his eye and another one on his fucking forehead. It looked like it was just fucked, and like it, no one wanted to talk to each other. Everybody fucking, no one was talking to each other. Everyone was pissed off, like it was always, it was all somebody else's fault. We've done this amazing thing. We've done another fucking 20 fucking whole cars or something the night before, including insides. And um, it, it's looking like we're not getting photos. We're just getting stung. And uh, then all of a sudden it was three o'clock. The other trains pulled out and we start getting photos. And like the difference, like, it was like, from going from everybody, the difference in atmosphere is amazing from not having any photos and being stung by wasps loads of times to getting photos, forgetting about that and everyone hugging each other and going, ah, oh, sorry, man, you know how it is, you know? Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that's what happened there. So we didn't actually get photos of everything, but we got photos of a good percentage of it and, um, you know, and it's just, it's in my, it's in my head. Even after they left, like, all of a sudden I'd be in, like, fucking Putney or something and see a VIFA tag, like, Vifa marched. Vifa had tags like all the way down the fucking A3 and weird places. Like he'd get like you gotta give it to him. He was up in places that like we were going bombing six months later and we're like, fuck, there's a Vifa tag. Scuff the same. Him and Vifa done some fucking walking. I shouldn't forget Scuff. Fucking, you know, you can't compete and it's true. So after those uh week or ten days or a couple of weeks of um just going out every day basically with one or all or some of that lot um we made quite a strong bond because it was real mad like the the, the techniques that Dell and myself were using without even meeting these other guys were the same techniques as they were using so it was kind of like it was definitely the way to uh um you know we all worked together. We didn't even have to talk about the way we were doing it because everybody was keeping dog for each other, doing it how you're supposed to do it. We had the same sort of mentality. Um, and that was good because for us, it was like, yeah, we don't have to fucking tell this lot. And uh, for them, they were probably the same, thinking, oh, look, we feel we can trust this lot because they, cause they work the same as us. Um, so, you know, that, that just made a good connection. And then I went back to New York for a while and um got fully polluted by scuff um j a and you know all of them like um I think that was around the time I met Les as well. I met Les we were bombing, and um that's when les you know I went out one night I'll tell you this right I went out one night and did a station we did the tracks at um to Marcy Avenue, I think it's Marcy Avenue in Brooklyn and uh, Stack and I did a piece on the station. So we were sitting around, uh, I suppose it must have been Scuffs, and I was getting my paint together. And um, obviously Scuff, Les, Spot, were only, they were only doing fieldings, they're not interested in anything else. And um, I was going to do a piece on this station and Les was like, what are you going to waste all that paint on a piece for? And I had like, I don't know, fucking couple of tins, three tins of base wheel, two tins of base wheel, an outline, three dot colours, whatever. I had a bunch of paint that you could have probably done, you know, 20 fieldings, 30 fieldings in if you were dusting them. And uh, I was going to waste that shit on his, in his mind on one piece. I started really beginning to understand, like, you know, this guy has never really done pieces, but his throw-ups have got more style than any of your fucking pieces. He's like a fucking beast. 
that was another person I got influenced by. So when I came back to London, fully charged up with just YKK XTC ness, I took it to the streets of London with Dell, and uh, really. The streets of London were clean. They've been clean for ages. No one had done anything. No one, you know, no one bombed streets then. That was like not what people did. We were the first really to do it. Me, Dell, and Act. Um, and we done, you know, we had a clean canvas basically. And really, the next people to do it after that were probably me and fucking, I don't know, me, Shoggy, and. After that, it was me off ski. Like, you know, we had three hits of the thing before anyone was even bombing streets. And now, you know, now look at it. People bomb streets nowadays because they don't even bomb streets nowadays. Let me change that. People bomb Peckham. People bomb fucking Old Street area, Shoreditch. Because it's basically legal. Like, no one's going to say anything. It's full of, like, trendies. And it's just kind of like, you know, what Bushwick or something became in, in New York. You know, you never see these people, you ain't going to see these people up in, like, a lot of areas. You don't see them up in any of, like, Deep South, or you don't even really see them up fucking Far West and stuff. You know, you might see them up around Ladbrook Grove, which is just another Hall of Fame area. One thing which was pleasing when we met these guys, that uh, me, Dale, and Act could hang. You know, like... Uh, these are these are the professionals and blah 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 people that we've always looked up to and like I'm not saying that we were as good as them by any stretch of the imagination but we were we were good enough to paint with them do you understand what I mean like it, we didn't look like complete complete toys we weren't doing you know we we had the same mindset um you know we've all been you know we were brought up all of us before. You know, there was a career in graffiti when we just did it for the love of graffiti, not because, like, oh, God might get an art show out of it. Like, who gives, you know, like, who really... You know, this lot came to London to do an art show, but they ain't coming to London to do an art show. They're coming to do some bombing and have a laugh and, you know, do what do what's cool. You know, if you sell something in the art show, you sell something in the art show. But um, and I think that's where we all connected, that it's sort of like... It was honest what we did, you know? It came from like some place that wasn't driven by money. It came from some place that was driven by the love of writing your name big on things. Oh, you know, all in all, in a weird way, like these guys were all over here for the uh, for the show, but the show was secondary. You know, like um, people are over here for the love of the sport. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, they come to do graffiti, and their way of getting here was a uh, was a show that was put together you know and that's um true of a lot of writers of that era like they might do shows but we all come from a place of loving graffiti like for the first i don't know 10 years 15 years of my graffiti career as far as i was concerned there was no chance of having a graffiti show or or any of that and um Unlike a lot of writers who start today, not all by any stretch of the imagination, but there's a percentage of these art school writers who start writing when they're 17 in college and uh, do it all to have an art show. And the whole thing is about that. And, um, you know, they're not, you know, I don't know. They've got a different loyalty. They've got a, they're not looking at graph because they're loyal to the game or the craft or call it what you want, you know. They're um, they're either loyal to a pound note, a dollar, or to their own ego and the bullshit narrative they're trying to put across, which is like, you know, generally generally not true, you know, and that bullshit ego takes us back to the one outline style lack of style people because um, their own ego and their own you know opinion of themselves is what stops them, you know, trying to do something different, risking doing something shit, you know, uh, risking um, somebody laughing at their stuff because it wasn't as good as the last one. They're so, you know, they're so precious, they're so fragile, really. It's fucking fragile egos of these, like, people that think that they're geezers, but, like, in this world, mate, 
you know, if you've only got one one outline, you're if, if graffiti was a sea, you'd be plankton, and I'm a fucking killer whale. I'll come and eat you all up with your shit style or, or no style, basically. And, you know, there's blue whales out there. There's bigger fish out there than me that can eat me up. But I can guarantee to you that they got more than one thing, unless they're serious bombers and, you know, like J.A. or somebody, like, <laughs> mate, he'll eat you up with two letters. But, um, you know, if you're going to come out and do pieces and do one, that's the end of the bottom line. If you're only going to have one outline... Don't expect to get any respect from anybody that actually knows about graffiti. You might get it from the toys that live around the corner or the toys that live in your town or the toys that live in your city. People that I know, you know, because I, I look at stuff and people seem to really write stuff that I don't even consider writing. But to me, there's people I rate are all-rounders, like. And, um, you know, Ghost, for example. Ghost's an all-rounder, like, he can fucking kill you with throw-ups, pieces, tags... He does everything. Like he, he wouldn't claim to be the best at anything, but you know, he's in the ninety percent area of all three. That's what I've always tried to do. Tried to be an all rounder. Like I'm, I'm not the best at anything. I'm fucking shit at tagging, but I'm all right at other stuff. And like you know, as my tags get better, my other stuff gets better. It's real weird. Like the bet, like I find that like people with good style have good tags, and that comes through in their graffiti. Because it's not a practice thing, it's just like a fucking... It's something you do so quick that you can't hide behind anything. Um, you know, there's no cutbacks on your tag unless you're a complete toy. It's real weird, because sometimes you can kind of contradict yourself, because you've got, like, ill bombers, like, less... I don't know if he's ever done a piece, I don't think he has. But he'll burn you with his throw-up anyway. And with that, you have to go completely the other way, completely the other J.A. way, or... You know, even Scuff cares the YKK way, you know, like, just, they're relentless bombers that didn't change their style, but that's bombing, you don't change your style when you're bombing. But when you're piecing, well, you still change your style, in fact, when you're bombing, because you get better and, and it changes, but, like, you know, it's usually a progression of the same thing.